Hi YouTube, I've wanted to make Watto from Star Wars for a really long time, he's been on my to-do list. Um, he's one of the best, I think, new characters from the newer movies. Um, so I've just started with a wire armature. This wire is 2mm thick and it's quite strong, it's made of steel rather than aluminium. Um, I'm just getting the proportions of the arms um, and I've made bends for where the hands are going to be and the same with the legs you can see it's just twisted around an initial kind of oval shape for the body um, again like the bends in the legs just trying to get the the rough overall dimensions um, he's going to be quite a big sculpt this one next i'm going to bulk out the main form using either kitchen paper or aluminium foil or both um, this just saves a lot of money on the main modeling material that i'm going to use which is milliput so here you can see I've stuffed the initial oval body shape just with um, kitchen paper and then going to wrap around this with the aluminium foil. Um, the kitchen paper is a bit cheaper than the aluminium foil so it again keeps the costs down. Right this is with the aluminium foil all just crumpled around it and squashed on. You don't have to be too accurate with this you just want to get the main overall shape. Obviously as you build up the layers of aluminium you squash it firmer and firmer so it becomes a lot more solid. So the arms here, even though they look quite thin, I've squashed quite firmly the aluminium foil so they're pretty dense. I've done the same for the legs as well, again lots of aluminium and really squashed it in really quite firmly. Um, there are a few little kind of flaps of aluminium foil sticking out here and there but I'm not worried about that, the milliput will keep that together. You can see I've just done a really rough shape for his nose. It looks pretty strange at this stage but um, yeah, you go through quite a lot of phases with uh, making a sculpture where it can look really quite awful but you just kind of battle through it and you know it's going to work out well in the end. Okay, next I started bulking out the main body shape with milliput. Um, you only need to do quite a thin layer of this because milliput becomes really quite firm, kind of rock solid. Basically it's a two part putty, you mix the two parts together and it sets rock hard in about four hours. I use milliput for pretty much all of my main sculpts now because you don't have to cook it in an oven and when it dries, because it is rock solid, it's not the same as the oven dried clays which can be quite brittle and bits break off quite easily. With milliput it's quite hard to break. Okay, same technique, just thin layers of milliput and I've gone around the head. I've just um, stuck a couple of marbles in for now. Those are going to be his eyes and then I'll build up all the eyelids and everything around that later. Um, same with the arms, just a very thin layer around they're going to look very basic at this stage, just like really long sausages really, but um, at the end I'll add all the muscles and things. Same with the legs. Um, so again, just getting the main overall form. Next I wanted to start getting a few of the facial features on, just so he begins to look a little bit more like Watto. Um, I get frustrated when things aren't looking as much like I want them to yet. So the eyes here started to work really well. I put in the eyelids and lots of kind of folds and things. He has these slight sort of angled look to his eye so he looks kind of like slightly sly. Um, it's a good look and obviously doing his eyebrow ridges as well and then putting all the kind of wrinkles into those. Just using um, modelling tools that have got kind of sharpish edges to them for the wrinkles and you just kind of roll the tool up and over. Um, you can press into like a bit of cling film or something. Okay this is it where I've gone a little bit further still and done the mouth and obviously the nose. Same kind of technique adding the wrinkles to the nose. Um, there's a couple of very thin nostrils. Um, his kind of tusky teeth I made separately and just had made a few holes and then I just stuck those into the holes. Um, yeah, you can see he's starting to really look like Watto. Done a kind of a ridge down the middle of the head a little bit, so that makes um, for a more kind of interesting shape. And his sort of tusks on this side are longer; they're not kind of broken off. Um, much more like a sort of, you know, like you were making a horn or something, um, with little ridges and things in those as well. The upper lip, I've done the same sort of technique with the wrinkles, just rolling like a. Um, a nice thin edged modelling tool 
over them to create the little wrinkles. But yeah, I'm really pleased with how his face is looking at this stage and it just really made me want to kind of um, carry on. It inspired me to get on with it. Right, I've got him stood in a sellotape dispenser just because the sellotape dispenser is quite heavy and this allows him to sort of balance. Right, okay, with the wings at the back, all I've done is put some milliput over some long bits of steel wire so they're quite rigid inside and I just drilled a couple of holes in his back and stuck those in. Obviously I'll be working a lot more on those later so I've done a lot of the neck folds and wrinkles I might add to them a bit later but they're looking pretty good so far. Next I attached him to a base and I got a whole load of bases from my work a long time ago that there's about five or six of them and they're metal and they're these white bases they've got like a little screw thing on the back and you can extend them but they've got these cool um, sort of wide metal bases so I think it will stay on there quite firmly without falling over yeah the little screw things at the back so I can unscrew it and I can make it about twice as tall as it is now um, which I think will be a nice feature for him because he's got wings he looks like he's kind of flying um, and if you can have him occasionally up really quite high that'd be quite useful so next I made his hands which was just a case of making kind of three sausages and merging them on basically um, I've made his feet as well and I've done the muscles on his arms which they need to be extended a bit more but yeah the ones on the upper arms are just like a couple of bulges and then the ones on the lower arms you've got sort of a bulge on either side um, again I'll soften it, all of these in at some point right I got so involved with all these next bits that I forgot to kind of video as I went along so I've done quite a lot more at this point you can see I've made him like a little waistcoat um, I rubbed some texture into that which was just a bit of um, kind of hessian material from an old um, shopping bag I've done the little bits of string that connect the waistcoat then I've given him um, a couple of sort of leather look belts and some pouches he's got this little tool that he kind of hangs on the side there um, which has got this cable which was an old um, hairband cable and I'm going to attach that to another cable to make it even longer and that attaches around the back of him um, you've got these kind of cool buttons um, and his belly button as well, I've put that on. Um, he's got the buckle for the belt, that was quite a nice touch. And I can't wait to paint that because that should look good all kind of in silver or something. Um, and I've made him another little leather pouch here. Um, I'll probably either add um, a bit of string or I'll make a bit of string out of milliput haven't decided yet and then the wings I've just made those out of um, kitchen paper and flooring PVA glue which is really strong PVA glue so you basically cut out the shape you want for the wing stick it on with um, PVA glue coat it as well with the PVA glue so that when it dries it's really quite hard and then you can just keep building layers and layers of um, kitchen paper over the top with the PVA glue so it's like paper mache but it becomes like I say really quite firm and then I can actually um, sculpt into this as well with some milliput later right if we turn him round here you can see the wings from the back and how I'm managing to get this kind of curved look to them as well um, I've also done wrinkles on the back of his neck which helps that um, shape quite a lot like from the kind of silhouette of him he looks really nice and you can see I've added a bit of detail to the back of the waistcoat a few more kind of buttons and bits of string you've got like little bits that um, come over the belts as well and he's got another pouch at the back there which is what the uh, cable is going to attach to later also he wears this kind of uh, I don't know how you would describe it like a sort of a loincloth or a nappy kind of thing that's where the um, cable's going to go, look, it'll tuck underneath, come round the back actually, and then, yeah, join on. But yeah, you can see this thing, looks like a sort of a leather nappy that he wears. <laughs> um, and that'll look good all painted up, but again, I'll use that same sort of hessian texture, because I think that'll look quite nice once it's painted. 
here's the back of the feet with the webbing um, just literally just kind of pushed into those again a lot of the detail of these will show up more after they've been painted okay I just wanted to show you what I did with the wings just before I start painting them so you can see I've just added these kind of ribs to the wings three on each side that was just with um, long thin rolled up bits of um, milliput that taper at the ends and then I've just merged them in and then I've gone over the top of them with more kitchen paper and PVA glue just to strengthen the whole thing so it means if I knock the wing or anything um, it will make it nice and firm right I decided for the first painting stage to just go with quite a bright blue really and I've done all the places like the top of his head and his nose um, I've left some bits just in milliput for now um, they'll be painted obviously separately but I've painted all his wings his arms his legs um, most of his body but I've left the belly area because that ends up being a sort of uh, cream color cream with kind of brown bits as well so I think one of the reasons I wanted to paint in this kind of fairly vivid blue to start with is because I'm quite a big fan of the um, Star Wars Lego figures and the ones of Watto his original one was bright blue like this like completely solid blue and then the newer one was a bit more realistic right this is probably harder to see but basically I've painted a lot of the areas that were just milliput with a kind of a cream color so just a mix of yellow ochre and white and I've gone in and I've painted yeah all of the um, lighter bits I've done a bit of dry brushing as well which is where you just bring out some of the highlight areas some of the higher up bits um, with a brush that's almost dry just by kind of dusting it over the top surfaces and this starts to work but I know I, I need to neutralize him down quite a bit and I need to um, kill some of the effect of the really vivid blue because um, he's much more kind of realistic looking than that he's not quite as bright as I've done him here next I did a dark brown wash over the whole figure so this is just a case of taking some dark brown paint which I mixed with um, some dark green and some dark red and then just really adding a lot of water to it so it becomes really watery and then just spreading it basically over everything and it sinks down into all of the little wrinkles and crevices and all the deep areas and it really kind of um, adds to it makes it look more realistic it also neutralizes the blue color quite a bit makes him look much more like he does in the movie I also painted all his clothing and things brown um, with different types of brown and then I've gone in over the top with some much paler brown and I've added that with a dry brush effect that's just a case of mixing your color rubbing it on a bit of kitchen paper and then just dusting it over all the top areas and that gives a really nice kind of highlight effect so it makes all of these kind of belts and things look quite like leather um, and the little bags you know and his little waistcoat area it brings out all of that texture that I made with the hessian okay here he is all finished off and you can see I've done a lot more dry brushing so a lot of lighter colors to bring out the highlights even more you can see I've also painted his eyes so I painted them white to start with then I did a sort of reddish brown color um, next for the iris and then I did green going in as a sort of fade into that color of the iris and then I did black over the top uh, and then I coated the whole thing with um, UV resin shone a UV light onto them and you can see they've all gone really glossy and it gives the eyes a wet look and makes them look a lot more realistic on the tusks I've gone in with a much paler cream color just to highlight all of the top places same with some of the lip wrinkles and that kind of thing um, and then yeah just little details here and there I've painted the buckle silver um, black on the tool and then silver at the top of the tool and I've done um, silver buttons on the front as well a lot more light dry brushing on the leather pouches which makes them look a lot more like leather and yeah those three buttons at the front ended up looking really cool I think in the movie they might actually just be brown but 
I made them silver to go in with the belt buckle and things and I think it looks um, particularly nice so I've left it. I've used a hairband here for the strap for the pouch at the front and then um, yeah just little details like painting the claws a dark colour um, both on his hands um, and on his feet. So yeah overall on this one I'm really pleased like I like the end result and I think I'm really glad with the scale I decided to make him as well because he's pretty big and he has a good impact when you show people. I also painted um, the stand that he's on black and I think that's a nice touch as well. It's just a bit too bright white before and I want obviously Watto to be the main focal point. So if you paint something black it kind of fades into the background a bit. Uh, it doesn't show up as much and then it brings out the uh, the actual model that you've made a bit more so yeah really cool if you like this video check out my other creatures that I've made and hit subscribe if you want to see anything that I post up in the future if you have any suggestions of creatures you would like me to make um, put them in the comments or yeah just drop me any comments because at the moment I have about a thousand subscribers but um, I'm still able to answer pretty much everybody's comments. So, yeah, let me know what you think of Watto and anything that you might want me to make in the future. I've got a big list that I'm working through. Uh, and, yeah, they're mainly a lot of weird creatures from various movies. But I am open to suggestions as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.